To the fourteenth episode of the Tuesday Night Podcast, TKP, as some of us refer to. We're <laughs> so, so cool we can break it down. I'm your host today, SBJ, and my fellow co-host with me, I have Alan, who is probably muted right now. I was muted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't believe you called me co-host. That's super cool. I yeah, I'm here. Should I not call you co-host? No, that's totally cool. <laughs> that's awesome. I like that. Uh, co-owner of Tuesday Night Games, co-designer of Two Rooms and a Boom, wacky professor, check, modest, mm, working on it. He's not working on it. <laughs> Our other co-host <laughs> slash co-owner of tuesday night games is here whoa 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 stepping on my intro hi i am sean i am also here you are also here alive i have no part of tuesday night games i just uh whoa 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 slow down there chief just you remember that <laughs> I was gonna say you totally are a part. You're the podcast host. Absolutely, yeah, Th- that's true. Um, hey, You're we should get a panel us. at Gen Con. Not to get off topic, we but... should get a panel at Gen yeah, Con. We should. You hey, set I... that up. Uh, we will be taking a two week break uh, because of the holidays. Uh, I will be gone all of next week, the Christmas week, and then uh, New Year's. Week. New Year's is after that. Uh, I believe Alan is working on something, and he's gonna send it my way to get posted. But uh, I don't want to make any promises because that's putting Alan under the fire. No, that, I'm excited. I'm not sure what to call it yet. Uh, so far, I'm leaning towards the holiday spectacular. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm looking at our Tuesday Night Podcast shared doc, and he has spectacular with two capital R's and four lowercase r's written down. That's right. That, uh, that is true. Spectacular. <laughs> uh, so... Before we dive into things, we're going to do table talk. Uh, Alan has a bunch of games that he's been playing, like always. I think Sean has played something here on the list. And he then, says he uh, thinks because it says sort of in parentheses next does. to the game. Yeah, it does. And then our topic of the episode, which we talked about last week, is going to be our stocking stuffers, our $20 or less games. Uh, these are games that you could probably quickly run to a board game shop and pick up before the holidays if you were looking for something to get somebody uh probably maybe amazon uh but anywhere else you're probably not going to get before christmas speaking of things you can't get before christmas we are officially sold out of two rooms and a boom on amazon.com and amazon.co.uk it's insane first run totally got word a couple retailers and i know amazon.ca the canadian branch has plenty but come on uh, pull it together man canada dropping the ball Hey, All right, so are you guys doing the second print run? Absolutely. We're talking oh, to our manufacturer. Oh, I mean, yeah, totally. I mean, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> is, there gonna be any, copies. is there going to be anything different about the second edition besides, uh, are you even going to put that it's like a second print run on it? Uh, there might be some differences. Stay tuned. Uh, we're working all that stuff out to bring you, you know, the highest possible quality terms and a boom experience we can do. Yeah, awesome. we're not trying to be secretive at all or anything. But... No, no. We may be wrong if we give you an answer right now. Like, we're working on leader cards and seeing if we can tweak them. There were some slight mistakes that most people didn't even notice. Only the most elite of players noticed some mistakes in the first edition, so we're fixing those up. Everybody Uh, who lives in Indiana and Illinois got put under the same state flag. Had to fix that. Major (laughs) gameplay error. Nice, nice. Cool. And only one of those people noticed it, so it really wasn't that big a deal. There you go. I'm actually playing, hopefully playing Two Rooms and a Boom tomorrow night. I Ooh, introduced my my work to Werewolf uh, this past summer because we had like a fun Friday, like force all the employees to do something fun together. Um, so I brought Werewolf and it went over really well. And everyone was like, Steve, bring Werewolf this Friday for our holiday party. And I was like, so I'm thinking I can, I can easily, without forcing anyone, move them over to Two Rooms and a Boom. And... Not that. I think both games are great, 
And I mean, Whoa. I would tell you, I would tell you, if you <laughs> guys, if your games, if your games Slow sucked. your roll. But yeah. I, I love Two Rooms and a Boom. The reason I like it, not more than Werewolf, but the, why it's different than Werewolf is there's no elimination. I think that's the reason everybody loves it more than Werewolf. Or not more than Werewolf, you said. but uh, It's funny. Four out of five werewolves enjoy Two Rooms and a Boom more than Werewolf. <laughs> so it's just an interesting little stat there. But I like the elimination in Werewolf because it builds like... It, it 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 forms like a I don't know resentment. Like, yeah, or like that. Commu- there's a community of people, like a vocal community, that starts gaining power in Werewolf. That makes it really funny to me watching from the outside. <laughs> uh, hey, one of the international students at UTD that goes to my church just played Terms of Doom for the first time, not knowing that I had designed it, even though we had talked and I had told him that. But he went to my parents' Christmas party, and he was like, I played Two Rooms and a Boom. And I was like, way to go, man. And he was like, you made that game? And I was like, yes, I did. I mean, why would you have played it if you didn't know that I made it? And he was like, some other guy was like, we're going to play this game tonight. And I was like, well, it's, it's always fun to hear that people are playing it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so hopefully tomorrow I'm going to introduce a whole bunch of people to it. Because uh, if they liked where I can't imagine people loving Werewolf and not loving Two Rooms and a Boom. Speaking of forcing people to do things... Did mm. you guys? We all saw the Force Awaken, right? Because absolutely, it's Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. It's Star Wars week upon this release, so we've all seen it. Uh, realistically, none of us have seen it because we're recording this. But this is what I want to do: let's all pretend <laughs> that we've seen it, and then listeners at home can replay this episode for maybe spouses or friends, and we're going to have like a total spoilerific, the opposite of spoiler-free, but it's fake. So what they're going to do is they're going to skip past what I'm explaining right now. And let's just kind of crescendo this. Let's start with what we believable things that we liked about the the movie and then just start escalating it into preposterous things. Like, uh, for instance, um, I'll start. Here we go. So this is where you want to chime people in. <clears throat> wow. I, I don't know about you guys, but I really love the movie. I was really surprised. Sure. Yeah, did you guys notice that it was kind of similar to Pirates in the Caribbean in the plot structure, though? The first uh, one? Yeah, the first one, Black Pearl. Think about it. You know, the ship and the curse and Captain Jack being the main guy. I mean, you see what I'm going I hadn't really thought about that. That's not bad. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, the Kylo amount of Ren. water was a nice touch. <laughs> Especially yeah. on tattooing, you know. Um, yeah. That flooding scene was insane. I would have never thought that. Yeah, yeah, some really mixed. I got it. Some people have to be pissed about that, but if you know the history of Star Wars and Tatooine, that's why it was so much better. So, what do you think about the Kylo Ren reveal? <sighs> My goodness, uh, I was amazed that. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but screw it. You know, uh, I just didn't think they were going to be able to get James Earl Jones again because they don't yeah. put him in any of the trailers. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't. Uh, but I was surprised with Mace Window surviving, too. Like That, that was, crazy. was cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I really liked? And I don't know about you, SBJ, but a lot of people were complaining about the cross hilt. And first lightsaber scene, wasn't that awesome, where it was just cut the cross hilt right off? Because that was a complaint. People thought, <laughs> that thing's have, not going to last. Yeah, and yeah. it did it first right away. It was like, uh-oh. You're in trouble, Loren. What, okay, no, we, we, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Jabba 2? Crazy. I didn't even think those people could reproduce, but it made sense because in the yeah. prequels, it showed Jabba's wife. Absolutely, yeah. So they have yeah. this I, that slug creature. I thought you were going to bring up the pod racing scene they did because that was my favorite part of the first movie. That's I right. I it. That was my least favorite because of that. I hated it, but when I saw it, I was thinking of SBJ. I was like, SBJ is gonna love this. Alan's gonna hate this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I thought it was spectacular. Uh, what about? See, they really did a lot of fan service there, and I can understand why mm-hmm. because it's such a mass market movie. They had to appease as many people as possible. Really brave with Yoda being a ghost and yeah. evolving into like a Gengar type guy. And then the blue ghost Gengar fight scene where yep. Anakin's blue ghost fights the evolved Yoda blue ghost. That was nuts. That's right. And yeah. the amount of lens flares J.J. Abrams used. Which was exactly the amount that I thought he would use. 
Crazy, crazy. Uh, but I just remember uh, Luke Skywalker coming back, uh, but his uh, lightning strike being it's super effective against Yoga Gengar. Oh, man. Man, was, that was nuts. I, yeah. Unbelievable. After the credits, when Nick oh, did you Fury stay? comes did you, in. Did you stay? Yeah, you I stayed. did. Yep. And Nick Fury asks Han Solo to be part of the Avengers. I was thinking, well, they're both Disney movies. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Disney really was heavy-handed with the crossovers. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah, excited full, about that. All full, full circle there at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that was fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get in. I'm going to be keeping score like a bingo sheet to see how many of those were accurate. <laughs> yeah. Any any realistic predictions? I feel like. The, you know, the big question for me is like, who is Kylo Ren? Who is Kylo Ren? And I feel like that's going to be the big Jar. buzz. It's Jar Jar, and he's the master of everything. Yes. I don't really have any. I don't have anything to predict. Like it's like thirty years later. I don't know. Like I don't know, I'd be down with another pod racing scene. <laughs> I'm betting Han's going to die. Han Damn or Leia? It, guys. Let's stay on track. Damn it. Sorry. We keep sorry, on going sorry. on these tangents. I mean, you started it. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That's not to, uncharacteristic. Not to throw you under the bus. At here at the Tuesday Night Podcast, we're known for staying on task, so let's not ruin our reputation. That's right. That's what people like about us. Shut up, Gilly. <laughs> well, let's uh, ride right into table talk here. Very cool. Alan, you got a ton of games here, man. Yeah, I got a whining dog, too. Let me shoot her really quick. Gun sound effect. Reloading sound effect. <laughs> Car sound effect, police siren sound effect, crashing sound See, effect. See, I feel like I could add the sound effects, but I feel like you just saying them <laughs> is way funnier in retrospect. <laughs> Alan begging for mercy from police sound effect, gun sound effects, silence. Damn it. All right. I shot her. Hey, Ooh, perfect All right. <laughs> You got two, four, you six that. games on the list, Alan. Let's hear them. Uh, all right, here we go. It's time for the table talk. I have uh, Chimera, which we played, Sean. Monster, my neighbor. Keep talking, no one explodes. We keep on bringing that up. I know that's not actually a tabletop game, but worth discussing at some point. Deception in Hong Kong. Uh, played again, but this time with a lot more players. Very nice. different with more players. Cash and Guns, because you talked about it in last episode, SBJ, and I had a copy I never played. Decided to go ahead and play it. Did you like it? I did like it. I did like it. I think it's relatively harmless in that it's quick. Even though it has a 30-minute time limit, pretty quick. And, man, those foam guns, I'm not going to lie. It's like a foam sword. It's so hard not to just aim them at someone. I mean, so there's a good mm -hmm. five minutes of people just fervishly aiming their guns at whoever whomever so it's crazy i think and, it makes the game yeah yeah it, <laughs> it it does add a lot to it how uh, many games can say that about their components that aren't you know miniatures games like this one component makes it worth to it, right to like if game. you gave me cash and guns without the guns i'd probably like, uh and That's i, I know cash, we, baby i know we can we compared it to russian roulette but like i didn't feel like that game needed an accessory. Yeah, our game our game can stand up on its own right. without <laughs> accessories. Yeah, it's just fun. And then I also played some Skirmish, uh, which is a new Kickstarter game that came in. And Sean, you said you got a copy of Skirmish as well. I, I did. Um, I was curious if you wanted to, to talk about that because I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it. Should that be like our mutual game that we'd both discuss? Let's dive in, man. I think it'll be fun. <gasps> I have an idea. This will be amazing. Uh, teamwork, elevator pitch. Both of us go mm. in an elevator. SBJ, mm -hmm. who we uh, who we pitching to? Uh, you are pitching uh, to a kid that doesn't know what they want for Christmas, and this is what you're trying to convince them. Okay. Hey. Hey. Hey, <laughs> hey buddy. Hey. What nice you elevator. doing? Hey. hey, come over here. Do you like tuck boxes and small games? Do you like games with no art or explanation on the cards? 
Yeah, it's just uh, swords and numbers that, or swords a letter. Swords and numbers, buddy. I know you love it. Yeah, it's just two players, so the two of us can go against you right now if you want. You ever played Stratego? It, it is Stratego, but it's with Stratego. cards. Yeah. None of those you, cool little components. Yeah. No we, bombs. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's no bombs. They replace it with shields. So each one of us have identical decks. We yep. each get two shield cards, and we each get a crown. And as soon as one of us exposes the crown card of the opponent, boom, win. So just you don't like want, Game of Thrones. Yeah, just like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Once you get the other person's crown, it's all over, yo. Now give us your milk money. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you just have five decks that you put five cards in. So that's 25 cards. We all have 25 cards. And we take turns one after another, choosing one card from the top of one of our five decks and then placing it in front of one of the other person's five decks. You compare whoever has the higher number, that card gets to gets to stay, the other card gets destroyed, you go back and forth until you can find their crown card. But there's some special cards in there, right, Sean? Yeah, there is. I think the archer card is special, right? Um, they don't put the abilities on top of the cards, though, which I thought was weird because it's so easy to do. The cards are just numbers and an icon, and you know they've got this little rule book, but they didn't print the abilities on the cards, which is a big, it's yeah. a big no-no for me. Any kind of anytime I got to look up something in a game, you're losing me fast. To defend it, though, it's really simple because there's just one cards that go to six. So there's ones, two, three, fours, five, six. There's a ton of ones, a lot of twos. By the time you get to sixes, I think there's only two sixes and two fives. But right. then then there's the archer cards, which automatically win when they're on the offense but they automatically lose anytime anyone attacks them, including the ones. And then there's the shield cards, which can't attack, but anytime they get attacked, they self-destruct, killing themselves and the other card. And then the crown card can attack, but it can only kill the other crown card. So otherwise it loses regardless, and that ends the game. You know, so just like all those famous duels between two kings. <laughs> right, whoever started it first wins. God, I wish that's how war worked. Just, you know... <laughs> Putin and Obama out there shooting at each other, duking it out like it's the Matrix. Yeah, and then at the end, it's just like, well, I started this fight, so you have to submit. So, so you're right. That's not that complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's only basically three types of cards. So each each team has 25 cards total broken mm -hmm. into five decks. Right, and you set up the decks however you want. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. Like, like, do you know like, where uh, your crown card is? Mm-hmm. And so you can, like, I don't know if you had a winning strategy, Alan, of, like, putting, like, a one, then a crown, then, like, a six, then a shield, then a, you know, a two twos. I don't know how you did it, um, how you stacked your decks. I had a, what they call a losing strategy. Because I've heard of that. I lost. So <laughs> one thing I did is I kept my archers in the back and protected them with uh, some a shield. So at the end of the game, they would reveal my archer uh, I mean, they reveal the card before my archer, and then I could send my archer out to kill probably what would be their most powerful card. And sense. I kept my sixes and fives up front, thinking I would just decimate early just to game. Weed it out. Yeah, weed it out. But what sucked was my opponent had their archers up front, so right away I pulled out my five. Boom. The archer just boom killed it. Pulled out my six, boom killed it with his other archer. Damn it! So right away I lost my sixes and fives, and it was it was bad. What do you think? Fun fun game? Uh, my opinion, not that we're reviewers or anything like that. Not as good as Stratego, but it's a good travel version of it. But when what? I played it, all I could think was, rather be playing Stratego. What's, what's, the, what's the price point of this game? I don't know. It was like $14. We both kickstarted it. Okay. It was pretty cheap. Yeah, I think it was actually more like $8, but we can look it well, up. Maybe it was $8. We're talking. I think it was just $8. Um, so for our listeners... Uh, What's the differences in Stratego? Well, one, it's pronounced Stratego. <laughs> right, Bagel. Uh, so uh, the other thing is Stratego is a board game that has a whole bunch of miniature pieces, and you can see one side of them, but you can't see the other side. So I can see the back of my pieces, and my opponent uh, can't. So, you know, vice versa. Then each of these have numbers, just like in a skirmish that we're describing except it has bombs instead of shields and there's also different character abilities where you actually have to move pieces for instance there's one character like the scout that can move 
all the way straight line or horizontal like a rook in chess. But by doing that, you reveal that they're the scout and the scout has the weakest. It's like the one equivalent. It's really weak. Uh, the other cool thing is like the engineer. There's a character that can disarm the bombs without dying. So that's what's kind of cool about Stratego. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's different classes. And there's even advanced games of Stratego that I've seen out there where there's a whole bunch of abilities besides the ones we just mentioned. One of my one of my favorite games as a kid, my cousin Ryan and I used to play it, and I didn't know anyone else who played it. And it made me think, oh, man, board games can be cool. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, skirmish is uh, we backed at the ten dollar level. It says it's MSRP. It's gonna be fifteen bucks. Mm, fifteen dollars for that game? Would you do it, Sean? It's tough, man. I mean, I might at a at a like Gen Con when I've just got money burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> um, it's a tuck box, but it's one of those games that I feel like it's so light it could have used some extra love in the art department. Um, it's fast. It plays fast. I like that. You know, when it's too confusing, you know. Um, but it it in a lot of ways almost feels like you know the first prototype of duel or something like that where it's just bare bones pure gameplay maybe there's something to be said for that um i am a sucker for components though so there's that yeah Str strategio sounds like they has that <laughs> i love it yeah it's a hard g sorry keep on going sbj i love it you're i i think you're doing it on purpose but i love it <laughs> I, I was that's why <laughs> that's all right okay um no i still can't say bagel though I hear you, man. <laughs> do, you, do you want to talk about anything else? I know we don't have a lot of time today, but... No, because the truth of the matter is I have to run out to see Star Wars in an hour. <laughs> no, so totally cool. I got to go and find out if Jar Jar Binks I is mean, actually we, Kylo Ren. Maybe Loren. we will get a know his name. real 30-minute show here. Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah, is it uh, Kylo? Lo yeah, K-Y-L-O, one word, Ren, like Ren and Stimpy, one John, word. John. Clyde, go. You had me at K-Y. <laughs> KY low I, f I have to feel like KY high you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> sorry what's up SBJ topic time topic, time. Uh, topic of the episode $20 or less games we all take turns here excuse me Sam do you have the time uh, yeah it's topic time I, I guess I started the last couple times yeah, why don't you start, man? You didn't get to talk at all during um, table talk. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, my first game choice, Sushi Go. I talked about this a lot from Game Right. Sushi Go. <laughs> from Game Right, it is uh, retail price fourteen ninety nine. It's on Amazon right now for eleven. It is also at Target. If there are targets, that's right. In... It is at Target. Well, yeah, which is really awesome. Um, it's at Barnes and Nobles. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Barnes yeah. and Noble actually has a really good. At least the moment, the one by my mall has a really good game section. Yeah, their games I heard are doing better than their books, which is what. <laughs> I believe it, man. I was surprised. Uh, it is two to five players plays in fifteen minutes. It is like Seven Wonders, but simpler and better, and that is my selling point for Sushi Go. Yeah, a little known fact about it, it's based off of a restaurant chain in Japan that is actually called Sushi Go, where it has a conveyor belt. And you just pick up sushi off of the conveyor belt, and then you pay for it afterwards. So it's really cool because that's what it's replicating because it's drafting. You take one, you pass your deck to the left, you get the deck to, from the person to your right, take and pass, take and pass. It's sushi go. So it's good. <laughs> Little known fact uh, about Seven Wonders flipping a coin and alternating who punches each other in the nuts is also a better game than Seven Wonders. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Taking it to the streets. <laughs> Boom! I, you know, it's really weird because I didn't even realize you shared my opinion of Seven Wonders, Sean. But anyway, I hate. Well, I hate any game where I can't find out if I'm winning or losing until the very end. <laughs> yeah, truth. So it's what's like the your game, game of life? <laughs> my game. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna recommend Lost Legacy, my favorite version of Love Letter uh, by AEG, and one of the few games I feel like. In a, that AEG makes it has good art, good graphic design, and is a good game. They never get those three things in a row. Uh, Nine ninety nine, two to four players. It's love letter, but with a tiny bit of, would you call it deduction, investigation right at the end. Um, easy to play. Keep it in your wallet. I keep it in a little notebook that I take with me. Um, 
perfect. I gotta, perfect I gotta shut you down right now, though. Do it, Sean. do it, I do really it. gotta shut you down because you guys had a cheap game episode beforehand, and you guys mentioned Sushi Go, but now you're mentioning Lost Legacy is your love letter. But man, Duel is only eight ninety nine on the Game Crafter, and I know you're being humble oh. because you designed <laughs> Duel, and not in just my biased opinion, but in a lot of other people's opinions that I've heard objectively, not even knowing it was our game. This killed Love Letter, Lost Legacy. It has that type of feel. Duel can be played for two to four players. Only $8.99. It's by Sean. You just D-U-E-L on the Game Crafter, and you'll find the one by Sean McCoy. And it's amazing. So you just go back and forth. So that's totally on my list, and it's at the top of my list because we'll shut down Skirmish right now as well because when I'm playing (laughs) Skirmish, I'm thinking, this is a tuck box, so is Duel. Duel is way more fun, way more quick, way more addictive. Um, many people that play it just play end up playing it for over an hour, even though one round only takes two minutes. It's amazing. It's a fast game. Know. Yeah, pick it up on Game SPJ, you ever heard about this game? Nah. Doesn't really have that good of a name. <laughs> yeah, you're probably mm-hmm. right. It's not too late <laughs> to change it. We haven't published it yet, but Absolutely, it's, yeah. it's in our pipeline because it's nice. We're, we're going to keep doing this more, releasing our games on Game Crafter so that we can get people playing it, play testing it, give PNP people a better option, and we can sort of gauge how well games are doing that we want to publish, but we don't have time to publish right now. I would yeah. call it Dual Go. Dual Go? Yeah. I'd call it Lost Lega Duel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we should just call it uh, Cause of Death Ghost and make it ghost themed. <laughs> there we go. I like that. Sounds really awesome. I'd buy that. It's okay. cool. Uh-huh. But yeah, uh, we should, we can spend a whole episode talking about your process personally, Sean, of creating Duel because you did that within 24 hours on the way home from Gen Con, wasn't it? Yeah, Gen Con. Uh-huh. We should save that for another episode because right. I think people would really like to hear your and inner like to hear of that about design. It your design of punch party because that's a game that's been through a lot of changes but it's really great all right let's stop jerking each other off and go back to sbj what's your next game uh, speaking jerk of SBJ off. jerking off you can pick up jungle speed Woo-hoo! for 14.99 if you like to grab totems that can be used as other objects uh it <laughs> is 11.70 on amazon right now i i don't know if other stores carry it besides game stores Jungle Speed, I haven't. I mean, I could see Jungle Speed being at a Target. I haven't before, but I mean, I yeah, can picture it because I, I have a good um, imagination. It's a dexterity game. It plays two to eight players, but you could probably easily play with more than eight people. Um, two to ten players. I'm sorry, but you could, you could play with as many people as you really want. Uh, everyone's flipping over cards, and if cards, if your card matches another card that might already be out on the table, uh, you're supposed to grab for the totem, and if you don't. Grab for the totem, you end up taking everyone's cards and your pile gets bigger. And the goal of the game is to have no cards at the end. Um, Man, and... SBJ, I cannot wait to show you Wooey because <laughs> it is going to blow your mind if you like Jungle Speed. I mean, I like Jungle Speed, but Jungle Speed also has the problem of getting old real fast. Then you're going to love Wooey because Wooey <laughs> never gets old ever. <laughs> It just but, uh, has that entry curve because people either see it and say, there's no way I'm ever playing that. But anyone who does play it usually ha- comes out saying, wow, I keep playing that. It's, yeah. it's the most requested game at my house by far. Yeah. And I'm not trying to knock Jungle Speed. Like, I feel oh, like we're not every... talking about Jungle Speed. We're talking about Wii. Oh, we totally moved on. Oh. Wii, yeah. <laughs> Wii fault. is the I'm most not... requested game at my house. Yeah. I'm not trying to knock Jungle Speed, though. I just think everyone should have Jungle Speed because it's cheap like and fun. It's easy pitch. And, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. easy to get to the table. Sushi yep. goes like that, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pitch my favorite co-op game, uh, Forbidden Island, by a publisher. Um, it's $17.99, two to four players. You are on an island that you're forbidden to be on, and the island is sinking like islands do. I had a lot of fun playing this super simple game. Uh, best advice Alan ever gave me about co-op games was I said hey man we really love Forbidden Island should we play Forbidden Desert and he said don't do it let me tell you why you're going to love one more than the other and you're never going to play the other one ever again so if you like this one you might as well stick with it and it's better than I desert. think he was right I can't think of any reason for Desert to exist Forbidden Desert's way I'm, too hard it's too hard that's crazy 
It's interesting because I just watched a video on Burgle Bros today, and Burgle oh, nice. Bros is like forty dollars though, and that's from an independent company that did it on Kickstarter. It's from the same person who did, ah, oh, damn it, I want to say paper words, paper job, but it's the deck building game that uses words. Dang it, papers in the name. Ah, anyway. Oh, ah, uh, paperback. Uh, paperback. Yes, paperback. And uh, so they did Burgle Bros, and the reviews that I've been reading is it's simpler but deeper than Forbidden Island, so it's supposed to be a oh, Forbidden nice. Island killer. And the theme's cool, too, because you're all burglars going into Burgle, and you got to get past security systems. And I, I'm sure I'll be buying that. Yeah, I, I almost I was thinking of you when I saw it, Sean. Yeah. All right. All right. Should we throw it to me, then? Yep. Yeah, what do you got? You know what? This one is kind of a no-brainer. Code names. Code names. By Czech Games, by Vlada Chafretil. Uh, it's a Vlada game, and it's 1999 just making it. However, can you get it from 1999? Yes, you can. Target online because everywhere else it's more expensive because it's constantly running out of print. But Target right now still has copies. Target from doesn't know what they have. Yep. Oh, they yep. do know what they have because Target Online is making a huge boost to like take over the board game market. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really cool stuff. But we've talked plenty about code names. Just shut up and get it if you haven't gotten it already. Because even if you don't like it, all your friends will. So if you're ever <laughs> in a tight spot and you're sick of your friends, just throw this game at them. Whoosh, boom, uh, and then walk away. They're entertained. You're a hero for doing so. Like pocket sand. Just poof. Yeah. SBJ, what do you got, man? Uh, I switched my last minute game to Bonanza <laughs> by Rio Grande Games. It Ooh. comes under at nineteen ninety nine. It is on Amazon right now for fourteen sixty. Probably have to go to a board game store to pick this one up though. Um it is I've two seven players. Store. <laughs> what? I've seen that game at every board game store. Yeah, yeah. It's it's two to seven player and it it has the like worst and weirdest theme to convince somebody how to play. Because you're like, ah, it's about bean farming. And everyone's like, that sounds awful. Um, but uh, you are a bean, bean farmer trying to plant beans. And everyone else is trying to plant beans. And you are trying to trade and negotiate. God, you're losing me. The cards in your hand. and It's it a is, tough sell, but it's a good buy. And once you play it, you realize this is simple and awesome. It's Yeah, it's like it seems like the most complicated, worst-themed game in the world. But it's actually the simplest and... F most fun game I've had with seven people. We should steal it, Sean, and just retheme it. Yeah, just put some fucking Lord of the Rings in there or something. <laughs> You're trading and buying and selling Cthulhu's, and uh, this is the game. <laughs> Zombie theme. There we need. The zombies always sell. Zobanza. I feel like we're running real good with ghost themed games. There we oh go. Oh my goodness, dude. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Hasbro said. Ghost. Uh, man, Ghosts we're going to be the next thing, right? Mr. Grimes, Dougal Grimes said ghosts are the next big thing. Yeah, yep. that's crazy. And there's SBJ saying ghosts. Ghost Nanza. Ooh. Uh, Boo Nanza. <laughs> there we go. Nanza. Finally got it. <laughs> I'm going to uh, go final game Star Realms by White Wizard, which I hate the name of their company because all it makes me think of is Wizards of the Coast, which maybe is what they wanted. $14.99, two players. You can, you know, play more players if you want to buy more packs and things like that. Um, this is a fun game. Uh, you should know about Star Realms by now. Deck building, competitive, 1v1ing each other. Um, simple, easy. The art's not much to look at. The graphic design ain't much to look at, but it's functional. Although and, uh, some people love it. It's crazy. I thought really? it was like crazy pills. Yeah, like some people are like, oh, I love the art and the theme. Like it's spaceships. How do you get attached to that? But I don't it, mind spaceships and space, you know, but I think. As opposed uh, to elsewhere. <laughs> so you mean spaceships in like the desert? <laughs> right, right. It's forest themed with spaceships. I mean, I don't know. I like, what are they called? Ewoks? Um, They're cool. It's a fun game. It's an easy no-brainer to me um, if you like deck building. Yeah, definitely one of the top deck builders for sure. If you're a big fan of deck building, it should be in there. Hey, I just want to thank you guys, by the way, because you guys are doing so well, going so fast, knowing that I have to be gone like within the next 60 seconds to get to <laughs> Star Wars The Force Awakens. So thanks for that. 
But speaking like of having a hard time limit has really improved our show. <laughs> Maybe we'll see what people say. Uh, uh, last one, and then I gotta run. You guys can close it down without me. Uh, just don't forget to say Alan Gerding for me. But uh, one night ultimate we'll werewolf. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 1799. That's by a friend, Ted Elspeck. Uh, and oh man, I'm gonna slaughter his name. The original designer is Akihisa Akua. I got it. I got it. You got it. Akihaza Okiwa. SBJ, you found your talent. I think it's just pronounced Bob Stevens, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, three to ten players in just eight minutes. And you know it only takes eight minutes because it's it has an app, times it. It's great. We've talked about it before in the podcast. And here's the thing that I love to do. I don't actually recommend doing this unless you have a good group that has a good sporting attitude. I just let the app teach it. Like, here, mm-hmm. look at your cards, memorize who you are. Now listen to the app and just do what it tells you to do's. Then- it's a great app. It is a great app. Yeah, it's a good it app. the best board gaming aid app that exists right now. I agree. Yeah. All it's right. Good. Uh, SBJ, anything else? I'm out of here, guys. I love you both. Peace, love. <laughs> I'll, I'll text you spoilers later. All right. <laughs> Can we talk shit about him now? Yeah, the show just got way better. <laughs> Uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any fourth picks to sneak in? Or was you know, that... I was gonna say coup, but you know, everybody's got coup. Yeah, that's true. My my hidden game was actually my was once upon a time, which is that's slightly right. more than twenty dollars. But I had a once upon a time is one of those games that either is amazing or sucks. I played it with Donald and Nikki from Board with Life, and Anthony Birch was there, and um, those guys are all amazing storytellers, and we just had a blast. But I feel like you can have a, a group that's like, once upon a time, there was a but, and he sucked. <laughs> like, um, not that that's not an amazing story. I but mean, I'm, I, I would be laughing. I'd be you were hooked. <laughs> it definitely puts pressure on your group. So great, great with creative people. Uh, not so great with people who get stage fright, I guess I would say. Yes, yeah. I played with six people, which I think is the player limit, and one person just refused to play. Like, yeah, she just wasn't having it. She didn't think it was fun. That's rough. So it was really, I mean, we just really skipped her or went on. It's it, They make solitaire for those people. <laughs> it, it, it's nice because um, Once Upon a Time requires you to, like, interrupt for you to win the game. That's right. And so since she was never interrupting and since her cards only affected her story and her end goal, it actually didn't hurt the game at all. That's true. Yeah. You know, uh, narcissists and people who like to be the center of attention do well during that game. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's a cool game and it like barely ever gets talked about. But maybe maybe we should have brought this up when Alan was here. But we we could easily do a podcast based on Once Upon a Time. We could just do Once Upon a Time as a podcast. Right, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. it's you don't need like to set up a video camera or anything to play Once Upon a Time. We just as long as we have the cards, we just deal ourselves the cards and we know what our end goal is. That makes sense. I like it. So, hopefully a future podcast um do not steal that thought. It's mine. I've wanted to do it forever. <laughs> Very cool. Um but yeah, I think that's uh it for our show today. I think it's good. Yeah. I'm hoping everybody has happy holidays out there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be off for two weeks. So we'll be back after, after the new year. Uh, Alan's hopefully going to have his holiday spectacular. Yep. So you guys can look forward to that. I have no clue what that is. It'll probably be terrible because no, I just (laughs) can't. It sounds like it's going to be fun. Just a lot of good storytelling, something to tide people over until the next amazing podcast. Yep. Awesome. Sean, where can our listeners find you? They can find me on Twitter at Sean McCoy, S-E-A-N-M-C-C-O-Y. Do you want to do Alan's? Hey, uh, you can find me on Facebook because I'm super lonely. I add anybody because I don't have any friends. Or you can find me on Twitter at A-L-A-N, Alan, G-E-R, ding, D-I-N-G. Perfect. Uh, If you guys want to give us our own Christmas present or Mm. New Year's gift, Mm-hmm. It would be really appreciated if you left us a review on iTunes. 
it good helps. or bad, but good or know, bad. Good yeah, good. it helps. Uh, it helps other people find the show easier. I was checking today in the games and hobbies. We are in the other games subsection with the other board game podcast. Uh, we were at like sixty eight uh, out of two hundred most downloaded. So that's not bad. I like that. It's not bad. Yeah, let's, we're moving. Let's them. break into the top fifty. We can top do it. fifty. That'll be the the goal. There are sixty seven more podcasts. <laughs> there are. All, a lot of podcasts. That's crazy to me. That's why they, uh, that's why it's important to get reviewed because you kind of stay floating. If you're if you're not in that top two hundred, people aren't going to find you. I'm Unless... not kidding. My number one thought on how to like go up the ranks or ladders or whatever is just be consistent. <laughs> like one podcast a week, every week. I feel like really helps us out long term because. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, you see you see a lot of podcasts that will just stop after like ten or twelve episodes. They're just and they're just done. Yeah. What do you want now on uh, It's Super Effective? It's Super Effective? Uh, when I checked this morning, we were... So It's Super Effective is under the video game section. Mm-hmm. Um, we were number 40, 40th most downloaded. Uh, and Much bigger audience. Yeah, we are at we have 524 iTunes reviews. Uh, How many episodes do you have? Almost 200. So once a week for, what, four years? Something like that? Yes. We've been doing it for five years, but we took three months off um this past summer nice yeah or was it last summer i can't remember we took three months off though at one point and uh i thought it would really hurt like i definitely needed it for podcasting about a single topic topic for so long Mm -hmm. um but yeah we didn't lose any listeners surprisingly i don't know if all podcasts do this because podcast people are very weird about hiding their statistics um but surprisingly older not like the most listened to episode in a given week is always like three episodes back. Like the newest episode huh. will get a bunch of downloads, but like it doesn't catch up until like two weeks where it's like, oh, like these are the normal, like almost close to final numbers. That's that got to be like um, just like word of mouth and search engines and you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it gets out there and finally it's 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 reached its max shareability. Right. Or just people just have a backlog. Like, like how I, I guess I listen to like, it's like every Tuesday I'm listening to this podcast because I know it comes out on Monday night and every like Wednesday I'm listening to this. And then the only way I really get behind is if I, one, I find a new podcast or two, like some podcast does like some series that adds up a bunch of episodes. Um, but I don't know, maybe I consume podcasts more aggressively than other people. Sweet. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Twitter. It is at Dragging a Lake. And I would tell you to buy two rooms in a boom, but they're sold out. So Go to uh, Canada. <laughs> move to Canada. You'll be able to get there. Have a great and safe holiday. Uh, thank you so much for listening if you've made it this far. And we will see you in 2016. Take care. Flemished.